Welcome to Know the Cause. Are you worried about a moldy home, maybe multiple sclerosis, asthma, bronchitis? Kyle Drew and I are gonna, toward the end of the show, we're gonna be discussing those because on our Facebook live show, we do a live show every Tuesday and Thursday where you get to write in your questions. We address those toward the end of the show, okay? In the opening of the show, I address, ouch, pain. I had no idea as I began studying this, how many Americans my age and much younger and much older suffer from pain all the time. Then we start a segment today called Doug's Favorite Book. I think this one is going to just blow you away. Then I had a question, gave a lecture the other Saturday uh, out here in Dallas, and a lady stood up and said, teach me about rheumatoid arthritis. All that and more on this Know the Cause. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists, and soon you too will know the cause. You know, I learned a few years ago that about a third of Americans, just Americans, a third of them, 100 million plus people live in chronic pain. Oh no, that's not bumping your knee and saying, ouch, that's not riding a bike and the next day saying, ouch, that's chronic. You wake up with it, you go to bed with it. Sometimes you can subdue it by just not thinking about it or popping a couple aspirin. Is that the way to go? And then t what I want to do here within the next five, 10 minutes is teach you there's a story that's so relevant to your pain. You're sitting there right now saying, yep, I got pain, but Doug, I've been to every chiropractor, every doctor, every homeopath in the world, and my pain persists. Just give me a few minutes, okay? Let's talk about this chronic pain. You're not alone if you're in pain. More than 100 million Americans suffer from that word chronic blows me away. At a cost of around 600, I've, I've seen estimates 800 billion a year in medical treatments and lost productivity, according to a report from the Institute of Medicine. Pain, I hate this word, management. I think to manage a company is a good thing. I think to manage your accounts is a good thing. I think to manage a medical problem isn't good. Pain management? I don't want it managed, Doc. I'm paying you to get rid of it for me. You've had me on pills for 16 years. You swap out the pills. I've seen other doctors. You are managing my pain. Because of pharmaceutical influence, folks, this is, I believe is real, pain is rarely treated to cure it. Pain is managed so it doesn't worsen. Body work done by massage therapists, chiropractors, and or physical therapists have a different goal in mind as they work to eliminate the pain by finding its source, by knowing the cause. And even physical therapists, one of my concerns there is a physical therapist, I'm, I'm not free out here in Dallas to walk into a physical therapist's office and say, man, I have had this hip pain uh, for months, can you help me? You can't. A physical therapist is only referred to by a doctor. A doctor has to refer you to a physical therapist. And I'm thinking, if I was a physical therapist and I was really good, man, I'd hang a shingle. And I'd say, I'm here to assist you with your motor skills, right? I, it's just so sad because a doctor doesn't understand pain. But by sending you to a body worker like a physical therapist, these guys are good, guys and girls. They're really good. I've known some physical therapists. But they're handcuffed. They can't see you. Only if an orthopedic doctor, a general practitioner sends you over. I want to be free to walk in. Uh, this America, I want to be free to walk in and see if they can help me with my pain. Pain management, there's that word again. Now here is some good news. It's 25 cents worth of information. You can take it or you can throw it away. The good news is you get to choose which you want to participate in, right? You will find that taking drugs is so, so easy but searching for a cure is really difficult. Any of you in that boat? Um, look, we can thank God for the internet. You know, we can go on and look and see testimonies and see what might work. How many of you have found a link between your fork and spoon and your pain? If you haven't investigated that, you have to hear my story coming up here in about two or three minutes because it's a true story and it'll rock your world if you have chronic pain. Chronic pain is horrible, folks, it's horrible, okay? Pain management drugs, okay, this is fascinating. 
Opioids and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications remain the main drug treatments for people with pain. Doctors have been using the same agents in one form or another for hundreds of years. Pain researchers say that new classes of drugs are desperately needed to prevent and manage chronic pain. Do I need to educate you on opioids? Do you think the drug companies are calling them all in? Or is abuse rampant in America and that works for the drug companies? I'm not blaming the drug companies. I read a study the other night that after a person has had abdominal surgery to lose weight, um, they are on these opioid drugs for an average of five or seven years after they have lost the weight. These drugs are being abused. And NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they can induce bleeding in the gut. Why? They widen the gut openings. Well, wait a minute, doesn't food leak out then? You bet it does. Doesn't food allergy happen then? You bet it does. So is food allergy the etiology? Or is it just a disease that comes along because you've got gut leakage? This show isn't called Figure Out What Your Food Allergies Are, although that was the field I was in 40 years ago. This show says understand gut leakage is the problem. You need to seal it up. Now, I have a story for you when we get back from this break and then a little bit more on what I'd do if I had chronic pain. It was 30 years ago this October. Man, I had dark hair and I probably wore light shirts. Totally different than today. I went to work at one of the biggest hospitals here uh, with a dermatologist. And folks, they were sending, he and the doctor downstairs, there were several doctors who learned about me and send me their difficult patients. So one day I saw a woman who had a headache so bad we had to have the lights down in the room as I was talking to her, I had to be quiet. When she came back two weeks later, because I put these people on the Kaufman diet and I gave them antifungal drugs, the doctors prescribed the antifungal drugs if they thought they would help them. Two weeks later, she comes back with her husband. She's in the waiting room. I said, Mary, come on in. You know, she walks in and there's a step in her. She's smiling. I'm thinking, okay, home run again. Thank you, Jesus. She comes with her husband. Guy shakes my hand and uh, he said, uh, Doug, this is unbelievable. I have lived with this woman for 35 years. She has suffered from migraines all the time. She has gone 10 days without a migraine headache. And he said, he told me his name, and he said, I am the chief of orthopedics at one of the big hospitals here in Dallas. Would you do me a favor? Would you come over and teach all these institutionalized chronic pain patients what you do? And I said, if you will prescribe nice statin for him. He did, all of them. I put them all on the Kaufman diet. I came back in a couple of weeks, folks. The rest, as they say, is history. 60% of those people had range of motion, had smiles on, had a jump in their step. They felt great. It, it, we couldn't continue it, folks. We couldn't continue it because those people checked out of the hospitals. Now, I often wonder what those people did. Did they go back to their old eating ways? Once they go off disability, those are checks every month. Once they're fixed, those checks stop. So I often wonder what happened to that group of patients. I tell you this story, not for self-gratification, folks. That was God working through me. I don't know what happened there, but I was really thrilled. And so were they, the majority of them. Something happens when you change your diet. The edema, the inflammation, we call it medically, stops. Right? What makes bread rise? That same yeast can cause you to rise, and all oh, my spine hurts, and all these nerves that come off. Some of them link to my neck, my forehead, my kneecap, etc. So understand the Kaufman diet. It's on my website. It's free. Uh, may change your world. Okay. The cost of treating. I love this slide. Go with me. The cost of treating complications from NSAIDs, aspirin, Advil, Aleve, Motrin, are more than two billion dollars annually. Look at the next line. That's about the same price as buying those NSAIDs. Isn't that ridiculous? Isn't that comical? And yet in medicine, folks, medicine is a self-perpetuating, non-policing cycle. Keep doing it because we're putting money in the coffers. I don't think they're mean. I don't think they want to do this. I think every doctor became a doctor to try and help people, but they're not. You manage their pain. You don't fix it. 
right? When it's fixed, they don't come back. NSAIDs increase the risk of heart attack, stroke, gut bleeding, etc. Yada, 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 yada. Okay, what would Doug Kaufman do? Cod liver oil, I would take a couple of teaspoons a day. I'd start a slow but committed exercise, and that means in four days, just because my pain isn't better, I'm not gonna quit the exercise. I'm gonna continue it because I have long-term plans. I've had this pain for 30 years. I have long-term plans. So Doug said, even if I'm hurting, continue it. Always get checked out by a doctor. Make sure nothing's broken or nothing's gonna burst inside you. Change your diet, the Kaufman diet, I believe is the way to go. Vitamin D3, it's called cholecalciferol. I'd probably take seven to 10,000 IU international units a day. I would take probiotics also, and I'd talk to my doctor about a half a million, a million units, IU, international units of Nystatin every day, right? A million units of Nystatin every day. I think within a month, the pain would be down considerably in a lot of you. Why not give it a try? You know, I have a favorite place to hang out. It's bookstores, and the bigger the better, because the, the diversity of books in the big bookstores are amazing. So one day, many years, 10, 12 years ago, Ruth is probably shopping somewhere, and I went to a little bookstore, and they had this book. It's called The Handbook of Toxicology. Now, to me, that means poison. Anybody who studies toxicology or is a toxicologist knows everything about poison. So I picked this book up, kind of a cute book, and it's $1 pretty thick and I thought okay that's worth a that's worth a dollar to me and I start thumbing through the book right like anybody would who wants more information on a book this volume presents data on the physical chemical biological and toxicological properties of 340 antibiotics on the market today what wait a minute antibiotics I took those when I was young don't tell me these are poisons and I remember standing there in that bookstore kind of looking at people to my left and my right saying, wait a minute, antibiotics. They introduced in 1957, the book is from 1957, they introduced the LD50. Now those of you again who study toxicology know what that means. It's the lethal dose that will kill 50% of the mice they're injecting antibiotics into. And I'm going, wait a minute, you inject antibiotics, well, I've had injections of penicillin. You inject antibiotics into little tiny mice, and they say if you, have, if you have 10 mice and five of them are killed with the injection, the LD50 is 50%, five in 10. And I'm thinking, my gosh, these are the 340 antibiotics that are on the market in 1957. Today, we have thousands of antibiotics on the market today, and that's a problem. I think that's why antibiotic resistance exists today because doctors pass them out like suckers in their office. Please be careful with antibiotics and always chase them, which your doctor may not know, with a good probiotic. Karen has a great question because it affects tens of millions of Americans. Watch this. Um, hi, Doug, I'm Karen Baker from Cedar Hill, Texas, and my question for you is, I've been diagnosed with RA, and I'm wondering if you can tell me what the cause of that is and how I can turn it around. You know, I don't know why we make everything in science so difficult. Everything has acronyms. You know, Doug, my SGOT is high. What should I do? I drink RO water. And then Karen stands up and says, I'm concerned about RA. So rheumatoid arthritis is what she's concerned about. Folks, I got to tell you, there's a newsletter before the internet came along. There was a newsletter called the Townsend Letter. I got it every month. I still have my old, old ones from the 19, gosh, would it be 70s and 80s. In 1995, 19 doctors wrote an article about arthritis. Could it be linked to yeast, mold, mildew, and fungus? They gave it thumbs up and said, yes, my interest was piqued. Of course, I've written articles on this many, many times. So let's delve in, okay? Are you sure, Karen, that it's rheumatoid arthritis? And here's why. Could it be a joint fungal condition? 
You know, your average rheumatologist will say that's ridiculous, that's very rare. Doc, have you ever tested for it? Or do you just routinely do what the drug companies love? Do you write a prescription for an anti-inflammatory and say, you'll feel better in a few days. By the way, I want you on that for your life. What are the side effects? Because I take 17 other medicines. You know where I'm going with this, right? I like to, well, I named the show it, Know the Cause. So are you sure this is rheumatoid arthritis? I know it's in the spaces where arthritis grows, but are you sure? Yes, fungal arthritis exists, folks. It's called mycotic arthritis. You can look it up on the internet. It's supposedly rare, but then I add, what doctor has ever tested for it? What patient has ever said, I have arthritis, it's so bad I'm crying? What doctor has said, well, the antibiotics I gave you 20 years ago could have started it, or are you living in a moldy home, or do you drink a lot of alcohol? Each of those exposes you to the fungus that can cause this, okay? It supposedly affects people with low immunity. Well, I've got to tell you something. Most mycotoxins, poisons made by fungus, induce, cause low immunity. So if you're living in a home that's moldy, if you're having a couple of beers a day or a glass of wine a day, that adds up. Over an extended period of time, that's putting plenty of mycotoxins in your body. You know, that's right. When I go out for a weekend, I go away with friends, I go fishing or I go away to retreat, I feel great. When I come home, I feel worse. Think home. Think home is giving you the lump on your neck that's been diagnosed as, you know, a, a horrible cancer. Uh, the joints that don't work. The depression that you just want to cry. Does it take place in your home? Okay? How can I be tested for fungus? This is a question I get very often. The doctor can put a needle into the knee or the hip or the elbow and take uh, tissue uh, from the site and culture it for fungus. He cultures it, you know, he should be culturing it all the time. Or test your blood looking for antibodies to certain fungi. You've heard of these tests. He can test for IgE, meaning allergy, IgG, meaning long-term exposure to these fungi. Or you can run a safe experiment and I put on there, with your doctor's approval. Okay, the experiment is safe, so let's go to it right now. The I may have arthritis <laughs> experiment, I, for lack of a better word, I think I have arthritis. To remove living fungus from your body, you must starve it and in some cases also kill it. There are antifungal drugs on the market. Few rheumatologists believe that fungal arthritis even exists, so they won't prescribe it for you. The Kaufman One Diet. It's in my website for free. It's in my books, all of my books. Effectively starves fungus. We know what fungus eats, and this diet says don't feed it. But give it 30 or 60 or 90 days till you really know the benefit of it. Once again, the slide heading, the I may have arthritis experience. Did you know that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of antifungals in health food stores? Oh, they're called vitamin C or vitamin D or resveratrol. Both vitamin D and resveratrol have recently been published as having antifungal properties. So during that 30 days when you're following the Kaufman diet, I'd take vitamin D3 each AM and resveratrol each PM. Again, get your doctor's approval uh, to do this. Are you feeling better in 30 days? Bingo, folks, because these safe supplements don't improve arthritis. Doctors will say, well, vitamin D3 is good for your immune system, or resveratrol tends to help, but they don't improve arthritis. So the diet and the safe, inexpensive antifungal supplements have you feeling better? More of the same by Christmas time, by Christmas time next year. Plan on staying on the Kaufman diet and see how you feel, folks. If the arthritis goes into remission, guess what? It wasn't arthritis. It was a systemic fungal condition. Stay on the diet for an extended period of time. Work with your doctor and watch your rheumatoid arthritis numbers go down. Because it was rheumatoid arthritis, but now you know the cause. Okay, my friends, you have questions, we have answers. Many of you ask, I do a live show every week uh, right here at knowthecause.com slash Facebook. You can watch it. And we notify you on our homepage. Hey, Thursday night at 7 p.m., Doug's going to go live for an hour. It's so much fun. You did it with me last Yeah, it was night. a lot of fun. Thank you, folks. And let's go to your questions right now that were kind of left over. Our house was just remodeled, doing an unknown mold growing in the garage and onto the walls of our home. Wow, this is not rare. Yep. The air in our home still feels unhealthy. We're also finding little black things on the floor. 
even after it's just been mopped up? Should we move out? Boy, Laura, how are you? I mean, if you, you know what I find? First pets, parakeets, cats, it's dogs cool. feel the effect. And babies, infants, six, seven, eight pounds feel the effect. Then we big people who've been around for a long period of time start noticing neurotoxic reactions or uh, health problems of one sort or another. If you don't feel bad, put a few pioneers in the house and remediate it that way. If you're feeling bad, I gotta tell you something. Remember when you inhale those little black things and if it's mold, when you leave the house, they go with you. The lungs are very sticky. So just know that. Um, what would you do? Would I just you? remember when we went to Michigan and there was a woman every single year we went, yes. she was on the front row, asked the same question. She was living in a moldy home. You kept saying, I think this is one where you might not be able to remediate it. You have to move out. Finally, she did like the fourth or fifth year we went, <laughs> and she said, now I finally feel great. I just got two new lamps for my two pioneers yep. because I was starting to get allergic eyes, and this is so funny because he's gonna laugh at me, but my cats were starting to get exactly what you said. The, we all started getting the same symptoms. Now we've got the pioneer lamps in there, fresh ones, and we're feeling good again. That's what I would think oh, about Oh, Kyle, first. I would spend anything on my cats to make them I feel knew better. I Skibble Here shanks. it comes. Skibble yeah. shanks. Here it comes. Is that yes, the cat's yes, name? Skibble yes. shanks. Love that. <laughs> Next question, John, do you think fungus has a contributory cause in MS? John, do me a favor. Go to Mercola.com in 2002 or 2003. Yep. Dr. Holland and I wrote an article on this. I don't think. I know. Uh, you're talking about the myelin sheath covering of the nerve. Um, what else could it be? What's poisoning that plastic? It's not plastic. What's, what's, uh, what's poisoning that sheath? It's got to be fungus. Type in, go to Mercola.com, or just go to the internet, any Google engine, multiple sclerosis, chronic mycotoxicosis. That comes up, and it's hit millions of times. Many people have read that. I don't think I know. Uh, many of these poisons in our air are... Uh, capable of causing neurotoxicity. Okay, so you gotta think this way, you guys. Okay, and finally, Irene, Doug, I've been suffering asthma and bronchitis since I was a, a little child. I'm now 54 mm -hmm. years old and I'm on an inhaler, QVAR. Man, I read the side effects the other day of QVAR. Ooh. I grew up, um, I was the kid with the thick Coke bottle glasses and the asthma inhaler. And uh, so it was time to run wind sprints or when I went out for football, it was time to run laps and it was miserable and I always had to have that with me. I don't have them anymore. Once I started discovering what used to be called phase one but now is the phase one version of the, the, the Kaufman diet. Once I discovered that and started eating that way Gradually, I just wasn't suffering from asthma anymore. You've never known me to suffer mm, from asthma. No, the whole haven't. time we've known each other, mm -hmm. it just doesn't happen. But my whole life was spent dealing with asthma until I discovered the Kaufman diet and certain antifungals. I'm talking over the counter. I'm talking oregano oil, olive leaf extract, curcumin, caprylic acid, things like that. And that's how I eat now, and I simply don't suffer with asthma anymore. Yeah, and your glasses, your Coke My glasses, glasses are almost completely gone. <laughs> that's <laughs> gone. Thank you, Kyle, for coming in. And by the by, watch the show. It's live once a week. Just go to our website, look on the homepage, and it'll say, Doug Goes Live Friday. We'll have fun there. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks. Okay, what did we learn on today's Know the Cause, right? That multiple sclerosis, that asthma, that pain, that rheumatoid arthritis, that bronchitis, all share a common thread. We must get a differential diagnosis. The doctor isn't gonna do that. We must rule out fungus as the cause first because on each of those conditions, your doctor is gonna put you on either a rheumatoid arthritis drug or an antibiotic for your bronchitis, you know, or, or an anti-inflammatory for you know, your pain. Folks, if you're satisfied, relegated to living a life on medication, then I would guess 
that's what you do. I'm not here to judge you, right? I'm here to offer uh, differential diagnoses that you can share with your doctor. The typical doctor, when you walk in and say, hey, doc, I think my asthma is due to fungus, he's going to think you fell off the turnip truck, right? And he's wrong because there's plenty of publications that talk about asthma, indoor mold inducing asthma. The same with arthralgias, you know, bursitis, arthritis. Anytime there's an itis, it means swelling. Right? You and I call it swelling. It induces swelling. Swelling is induced. Well, what makes bread rise? Hope you enjoyed today's show. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.